These are dangerous woods. We're on the road again, and this time we're off to the Forest of Dee. It's half term, there's gonna be kids. Are we mad? Now some of you may have noticed that our Wales trip finished rather abruptly. Not particularly busy, is it? I don't know how it happened, but I managed to lose two days from the end of that trip. So hey ho, we're now on to the next trip, the Forest of Dean. And as usual, the M25 is doing us proud, at making us drive slowly. There's an accident up ahead and that's probably what's caused this delay. We've got a rear end shunt here. This one appears to have gone into the back of the one in front. We're not slowing down to rubberneck. We're all being controlled here. Hope everyone was okay. After we'd passed that point, we were back on our way as normal. We're sharing the driving today, so it's time to change drivers and also have some lunch. This is Beaconsfield services on the M40 and we've got ourselves a selection of mm. goodies from Marks and Spencers. Ooh, very posh. Mm -mm. Let's get out of here. It's manic, half term, and we've only got ourselves to blame. Way too many people. Oh look, there's a van just like ours in the next lane. Total gridlock. We managed to escape the crowds and get back on the road. The weather is just brilliant. Teach me to open my big mouth. Thankfully, the bad weather didn't last long. And this section of the road was really beautiful up here on this ridge. We tend to change drivers every hour to relieve the boredom. Go. Yeah. Bit of a fast road this, so we just bide our time and wait for a safe pull out. That's the way to do it. We're both getting a little bit bored of the driving so I've made an executive decision to pull off and camp here for the night. Now you may know I like to use the Pocket Earth app. It shows little parking spaces on there and whenever I'm feeling like parking up, I just check that app and see what's near to me. And that's how we found this one. Ooh, this one looks a little bit bumpy. <laughs> The right hand side looks better. The entrance to this park up isn't particularly good, but uh, that will also discourage other people from coming in here. What's the name of this place? Do you know, Charlie? Yes, I put it down in the log. Oh. Mm -hmm. Cold Comfort Common. Mm. Off the A436. It's quite a nice evening now as the sun's beginning to set. Let me show you around our little camp. We're quite near this road, but I'm pretty confident that's going to calm down pretty soon. We sat up here relaxing until it got dark, and then I began to fancy a Chinese takeaway. Mm. So Carol started doing some research. She found one 18 minutes away, so we're going to go off and get something to eat and we might camp there or we might come back. Let's see what happens. Been there a long time, that car. It was here when we arrived, wasn't it? No, I think that was a different car. Straight on here. Okie dokie. Just relying on Google Maps. Carol is navigating on her phone. Google can be a bit dodgy at times. Likes to bring you down some very narrow tracks. Certainly seem to have the roads to ourselves here though. This is the Dragonfly Chinese takeaway in Cheltenham and it got good write-ups which is why we chose it. We're gonna eat it in the local church car park. We have no shame. 
There's your noodles, Charlie. They're very tasty, aren't they? Pretty tasty. Carol went for vegetable, but I chose the chicken chow mein, and they were both absolutely delicious. <laughs> We didn't fancy spending the night in the town, so we come back to the car park where we were before. We're just having a nice cup of tea, and then we're gonna settle down for the night. We just noticed though, that our gas is now down to two lights. It's starting to get a little cold now. Time for bed, we'll see you in the morning. We had a peaceful night here. You can hear quite a bit of road noise behind us, but uh, that's only just started now because of the rush hour. And we haven't seen anybody else come in here at all this morning. Kilkenny viewpoint. I think it probably used to be a viewpoint, but you can't really see anything now because they've let the trees get too high. Maybe you need to walk to see the view, Ken. Loads of condensation this morning, only to be expected now this time of the year. So we've got the old aircon on doing its job. I deliberately parked it in amongst these puddles last night in order to discourage other people parking near us. Keep a tidy ship, eh Charlie? Pretty difficult though with this stuff, sort of a sand and mud. It's important to get rid of this moisture. So if you're new to van life, make sure you do, otherwise things will go rusty and mouldy. Right, we're all done. I think it's time to get moving. Our van is 1.94 metres. I've got hardly any view to the right here, so I always wind down my window to listen for the traffic. So what do you think of that uh, park up last night then? I thought it was really good. Um, I felt totally safe there and slept really well. Yeah, it was pretty good. We'll mark it then for future use. Strange little hut here. I wonder what it's for. We're driving through the town of Little Dean in Gloucestershire and it looks like it's bin day today. We're turning right in a minute and by that junction there's another one of those sort of huts, different design, but this one's being used as some sort of community exchange store. There it is. Looks like there's someone in there putting some new stock in. I always find it heartening when you see a community helping each other in that way. And here we are in the Forest of Dean. This is a forestry car park at a place called Sudley Ponds. Every time I see this van on video, I can't believe how small it is. Sudley Ponds sit close to the village of Sudley in the Forest of Dean. They're also known as Sutton Ponds. There's four of them in a line through the narrow Sutton Valley and they're surrounded by tall Douglas fir trees. They think the ponds were probably dug in the 18th century for a mill in Sudley Valley. At this time of year, it's certainly a very peaceful spot with only the odd passing car. I've no idea what these ducks are, but they're clearly all expecting bread. And we've come empty handed. They were all very nervous at first. They soon get used to you. I think my favourite one is this little one that's just come in on the right hand side. Very pretty. You're never far from a robin in the UK 
they always come up and say hello. And Carol found a very nice display of mushrooms. Our next stop will be the Dean Heritage Centre. We thought the place was closed when we pulled in, but there are cars in the car park, so that's a good sign. It's half term at the moment, so I should imagine kids will be running all over this place. Here's a big one now. We're not really Gruffalo spotters, but when it's raining, any port in a storm. So this place has had quite a number of lives. In 1612, it started out as an iron forge. It became a corn mill, then a leather board factory, scrap yard, and finally a museum that has now become the Dean Heritage Centre. Not long ago, we didn't have to wear masks and now they're back again for Christmas. The first thing we wanted was a little bit of breakfast. Gasping for a coffee. Yeah. Carol's gone for the flapjack. Can you guess what I'm having? Mm, apricot flapjack. You score 10 points if you guessed a bacon roll. You lose 10 if you said the big breakfast. I spilt it in my saucer. I'm not very good at pouring. The centre makes a good job of catering for both adults and children. And there are lots of stuffed animals that they encourage you to touch. This map shows how the site used to be laid out. They have exhibits right across the spectrum of local history. This cut through of the forest area shows the coal seams in black, which led to a lot of mining in the area. Conditions were hard and many mines were very small concerns. Difficult to imagine what it must have been like in such a cramped area. Anyone born in the forest had the right to mine. There's no maternity hospital in the area now, so now you'd have to be born at home. These are rubber overshoes used to avoid creating sparks that could set off gunpowder. And this pouch used to hold the detonators. At the larger mines, various engines were used to pump out water and to do other work that once had to be done by hand. They have an old school room here as well. Sit up straight, boy, with inkwells and rather uncomfortable looking seats. Once upon a time, all of this was cherished by its owner. No, don't get too excited. Why? There is a mangle. Let me see my mangle. There it is. Oh. So pretty. This was mangle heaven because this is a cider press and this one was pulled around by a horse. It's Halloween soon, so everybody was buying and cutting pumpkins. This sign warns kids of spooky things in the cottages. Hello, dear. Back in the day, everything was powered by water. So what's this place all about? This is where they do the charcoal burning. Mm. So many places were cashing in on the Gruffalo and the kids seemed to absolutely love this. We really enjoyed the Dean Heritage Centre and we'd certainly recommend it, particularly good on a rainy day. Right. 
Kenny boy needs a bit of a nap, so we're off now to find a little park up where we can relax and then perhaps go for a little walk after that. We parked up at the Speech House Woodland Car Park. As soon as I put the drone up here, I realised that we've arrived a little bit too early. We came to see the fall colours, but they're not quite here yet. Lots of people are here in their place though, and the forest is very busy. The forest covers an area of 42 square miles, and it's one of the surviving ancient woodlands in England. We're off to see the Cathedral in the Woods. It's not a building as you may have thought, but a huge piece of stained glass hanging in the trees. Well, it's a lovely sculpture, but the only downside is that they've got a blooming road right next to it, haven't they, Charlie? Yeah, they have. It's a bit of a noisy road. Yeah, but having said that, <clears throat> I suppose it's got to be easy access for everybody. So it's right near the car park, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. Okay, let's get back. We need to source some LPG as we're running out. So we found some on our iPad and set off to see if they had any. The Forest of Dean is a very hilly place and at some points your car is even going to struggle to get up some of the hills. I don't think we've been to an LPG garage where there hasn't been a problem and the gas hasn't just flowed into the back of the tank. Without gas, we're going to be pretty cold. Thank the Lord, we finally got it to work. And we pumped in 8.26 litres. Yeah, it never worked perfectly the first time, does no, it? it's always a problem. Yeah. A few minutes later, we were in our park up. Nice little out of the way spot in the forest. Mmm, that looks tasty. Thank you, Bunny. What are we going to be doing tomorrow then? <laughs> 